Do you trade based on technical analysis? Do you trade based on price action? If you answered yes, then you're going to want to stick around throughout this entire video because in this video, I'm going to show you my exact three-step process that I use each and every week to make extremely accurate market predictions. The same process that I used last week to make a prediction here on the Aussie dollar, the chart you see on your screen, saying that if this market got up to 0.7195, we would see a dramatic fall out of the Aussie dollar. That's exactly what happened, as you can see on the screen. And in today's video, I'm going to show you the exact three-step process I use to make predictions like this each and every week. If that sounds interesting, make sure you're subscribed here. We do a video like this each and every week. Make sure you click that like button for me. Follow us on the socials, and I'll see you guys on the other side. Welcome back. So before we actually get started with today's video, I'm going to show you a quick clip from the Aussie dollar analysis where we made this prediction of the fall from 0.7195 that happened last week. I'm going to go ahead and play that clip and directly afterwards, I'm going to come back and show you that three-step process I'm talking about that allowed me to make that prediction and hopefully that will give you everything you need to make accurate predictions just like this in your own trading as well. I can't wait to do that, so I'll see you directly after this next clip. And now we have that market pushing up into another zone we were paying attention to. Why are we paying attention to this zone? One, two, three, four times we've tested this level and reacted from it. So if we get back into this zone, it's definitely a level this week or this coming week, excuse me, that I'll be paying attention to for shorting opportunities on the Aussie dollar. That's what I'm looking at on this currency pair and moving. All right, so in that clip, as you can see, we made a prediction that this market, the Aussie dollar, if it made it up to this red zone we have here, right at the 0.7195 level, that we would see a fall out of this market from that level. That's exactly what the market did. And now let's go through the process that I'm talking about that allows me to make accurate market predictions like this. We'll take a look at a few other examples in today's video, and I'm going to show you the exact process that I use right now. So the process always starts with the most simple forms of technical analysis that there are. And those two forms of technical analysis are trend and structure. What I mean by that is what trend is the market in looking at a high time frame. For me, that's the daily chart. I start out on the daily chart and I ask myself, what trend is the market in? For this example on the Aussie dollar, we were in a downtrend based on my analysis and I'll show you exactly why that's the case. I have very strict rules for trend. And on this pair, what we had done is push down. That is way too big. Sorry guys. Make that a little bit smaller. Just made it bigger. Great. Let me delete that. Okay, we're going to start over. Okay, so what this market has done is pushed down to from a high to a low. We then create a lower high and a lower low right here. That tells me we are in a downtrend. That's why I classified the Aussie dollar last week as in a downtrend. And this market, to me, and based on my analysis, is in a downtrend until we break and close back above this previous lower high. If that doesn't happen, we are still in a downtrend. And what that means for me is that I'm still anticipating this market pushing down. I'm still looking for short trades out of this market. Now, that's the first step of the three-step process. The second step is looking for levels of structure in the market that the market has reacted to three or more times. Here around the 0.7195 level is one of those levels. If I zoom the chart out and if I bring this blue line up, so you can see this better, you'll see that there are multiple occasions where the Aussie dollar used this level as support and resistance in the past. Because of that, I knew that this is a level I wanted to be looking at for potential shorting opportunities. And that's exactly what we were talking about in last week's video. So step number one, identify the trend of the market. Step number two, identify major levels of structure. Step number three, follow your trading plan. What do I mean by that? Create an entry reason for these zones, take that data and or take that entry reason, that entire trading plan that you build, back test it, see what it has done historically so you can create a risk management plan. We have a lot more information on actually building a trading plan in the EAP training program. You can browse through some of our other YouTube content as well. Or if you would like to look at the EAP training program, learn a little more about that, it's in the description as well. But that was our analysis here on the Aussie dollar. Next up, we're gonna take a look at the dollar yen. Another uh, trade that last week 
we another pair, excuse me, that last week we made a prediction on. That prediction has not yet come true, but last week on this pair, we were saying that this was our major level of structure, right? And we weren't looking, we were not looking for possible shorting opportunities because this market is showing us rising support levels while finding the same level of resistance. What does that normally mean? Well, that normally means that we see some type of breakout of this level. So last week, what we were talking about, and it's exactly what we're going to be looking for this week, is we are waiting on this market to break and close above this level, right? And this is going to be the major level of structure that we're using. And let's actually do the full three-step process now. So the full three-step process here, we identify the trend as step number one. Let's do that. Here on the dollar yen, there it really isn't a trend. I, I wouldn't call this an uptrend. I wouldn't call this a downtrend, at least from the price action that we can see most recently. So currently this is in consolidation, but just preparing for the future, what I do know is that if we get a break and close, above this 112.1 level if we get a break and close above that we will be in an uptrend according to my analysis so what we were talking about last week and we have the same analysis on the dollar yen this week is if we can get a push up that breaks and closes above this 112.1 level what we're waiting on afterwards for the remainder of this week probably going into next week as well depending on what happens with price action is a pullback to that level followed by a possible push up now another scenario we could see is just a full blast up without that pullback that we want to see and if we don't get that pullback then the next place we're looking for counter trend shorting opportunities on the dollar yen is 113.86 so those are the two levels that we are paying the most paying attention to paying attention to the most here on the dollar yen is 113.8 around the 114 even level if we see some kind of massive surge out of this market and if we get a break and close above 112.1 what we'll be waiting on is a pullback into that level and the push up again using that three-step process trend is not really identifiable but if we do get that break and close we're in an uptrend structure levels this has been tested multiple times as resistance and support more than three times giving us a good level to look at for possible trades. The next step, follow your trading plan on a lower time frame based on whatever entry reason that you like best, that you use, that you've tested in historical data. So that was the dollar yen. The next thing we're gonna take a look at is on the pound dollar. We had a prediction on this pair last week that we would see a possible break of these support levels right here where this red line is and a possible pullback up. I'm gonna play a very short clip of that analysis right now. So I'll be right back after that clip but the only part of this specific chart that scares me is the fact that we are consistently making lower highs. We're making lower highs. We have the same exact support level that oftentimes insinuates that we will see a breakdown of that level. So I'm not looking for long opportunities here on the pound dollar going into next week, and I'm not looking for shorting opportunities until we get this move. If we get a move that breaks below 1.3, and we get a close below that level on a daily chart, my next trading opportunity for me is going to be this zone right here. We're gonna see if we can get a pullback into that zone and same thing, drop down to a lower time frame, use my actual strategy, my actual system on that lower time frame to look for a trading opportunity to the short side. That's what I have. Okay, so as you can see in that clip, the market has now done almost exactly what we were predicting. We have these falling resistance levels, this level of support here. Normally that means we're gonna see some type of breakout. If this candle closes down below these support levels, then exactly what we said in that video, that little clip you just watched, is what we're gonna be looking for. If we get that break and close with this candle, then what we're gonna be looking for next is a pullback up into 1.3 1 even, and at that pullback up into 1.3 uh, 1 even is where we'll look for possible shorting opportunities. Now, why is that? Let's go ahead and do our full three-step process once more. The reason is because currently, or not yet, but if we get a close below right here with this candle, then the pound dollar will then be in a downtrend according to my analysis. Step one, identify the trend of the market in the own a high time frame, currently on the daily chart here on the pound dollar. So why are we in a downtrend? Because we have, if we get that close below, keep that in mind, the day hasn't finished yet, so I don't know if it's going to close below. We have this push down, this push up, and then this push down that breaks and closes below support. That is a one, two, three move that I use to classify a market in a down or an uptrend. In this specific case, of course, in a downtrend here on the pound dollar. Next up, what do we do? Next, we look for levels of structure that have been tested more than three times. If we look here, this obviously here on the pound dollar, we have one, two right here, three, four, five, 
instances where this level was used as support. So we have a multiple tested level of support. So if we get this breakout, what we're looking for going forward this week and into next week is a pullback up into 1.3 and a possible move down from that area. That's what we're looking at on the pound dollar for the remainder of the week. Now, let's go ahead and move on to the euro dollar here on this pair. Last week, we talked about this pair being in a downtrend. We'll go ahead and go through the entire three-step process. So last week on this pair, we said that we were in a downtrend because we did not break above our previous lower high right here we'll go through this that's our that's our high here is a low here is a lower high here is a lower low and if we do not break above this lower high then the trend that we're currently in is down and that continues to be the case until we break above this lower high at least according to my analysis with that being the case we were still in a downtrend last week and i did say that we actually looked for a trade in the EAP out of this area around 112, we were a little bit off with that area as the market did push up above it quite a bit. But after pushing up above it exactly what we expected, we got that push down back to support around 1.12 even. Now that we're here back at support, 1.12 even, the market found a little bit of, of support there in that area. But if you look here, how similar does this look to the pound dollar scenario, right? We're seeing a very similar situation with these falling resistance levels and this one distinct support level. So what we're expecting throughout this week and what we're hoping to see is this euro dollar pair break through the 1.12 area, breaking close below it. If we get that breaking close, we're looking for a pullback into that area and then a, a trend continuation out of this euro dollar pair, looking for it to continue in the downward direction. So our area of interest, if we break and close below it, not as support, Remember, we don't want to use 1.12 as support now because we have falling resistance levels, which is a sign that we're going to get a breakout to the downside. So because of that, instead of using this level at 1.12 as support, we're going to wait, or at least I'm going to wait. You use your own analysis. This is not financial advice. You do whatever your trading plan tells you to do. But what I'm waiting for is a push and close below 1.12. A pullback into that area will give me an opportunity to look for shorting trades, short trades here on the euro dollar. Now, we're going to move on to the dollar Swiss at this point. And the dollar Swiss did not cooperate whatsoever with the analysis we did last week. Last week, what we said about this pair is that we, and I think last week we were about right here when we did our video, and we were waiting for a pullback into 1.0, followed by a big move up. But we thought this big move up would at least have a small counter trend bounce right here at 1.01. That, as you can see, did not happen whatsoever, which is totally fine because we dropped down to a lower time frame. And if we step back for just a second and we go through our process one more time, three-step process, identify the trend. The market was pushing up pretty heavily, okay? So next, what was the um, what was the next step? The next step was looking for a level of structure that had been tested multiple times. Well, if we use this top level, the red line here, you'll see that it's been tested more than three times as structure resistance. With that being the case, it was definitely a level we were looking for possible counter trend shorting opportunities from. But if we drop down to a smaller time frame, my, my personal trading time frame is the four hour chart. Right here at this red line, do you see any reason to enter a trade? So that third step is extremely important, right? Just because we have a level of structure and we're following the trend of the market or placing a counter trend trade in this specific scenario, just because that's the case, that doesn't mean that we just randomly place a trade at 1.01 because it's a level of major resistance. You see, what I'm saying is that we have to have that third step intact as well. That third step is following your trading plan down on a lower time frame. For instance, maybe you're someone that says, I'm waiting for this major level of structure to get hit for a counter trend trade, then looking for a very simple price action pattern like a double top. In this, uh, this specific scenario, we had absolutely no reason to place a trade, no entry reason whatsoever. So just because the analysis was a little bit off, we didn't lose any money on it. It just happened to be that the market did not cooperate with the technical analysis we did. And that will happen from time to time. Keep that in mind if you are new. Now, what are we waiting on next out of the uh, dollar Swiss? And actually, before we move on to that, what we did say in last week's video is we were looking for a possible pullback into 1.0. If we go down to a smaller time frame. This market did break above 
right? Broke above 1.0, and we actually got that pullback into 1.0 on a smaller time frame, giving an opportunity to enter the trade. We didn't. We actually had a perfect scenario for what we call pullback entry in the EAP trading program, but I was not around my computer at the time of the close of that candle, so I didn't have an opportunity to actually enter the trade. But we'll go ahead and go back out to the daily chart, talk about what we're expecting next out of the dollar Swiss. Let's zoom out a bit because we're coming into some brand new highs here on the dollar Swiss, at least brand new highs considering uh, a pretty long distance back, a pretty long span of time. So here at the black line I just drew is going to be the next level of possible resistance. And if I was to give another level of possible support, since we are in such a strong uptrend, a level that I'll be looking at for a possible bounce, uh, the pullback. Let's okay. So let's go ahead and drop down to a smaller time frame, and I'll talk about this a little more in depth. Right now, the second black line I drew at 1.0168 is because we have one, two three times this market has used this level as a level of resistance support, just a level of structure in general. So moving on, let's drop down to a four hour chart. I'll show you exactly how this analysis actually plays out. So we can see that we're in an uptrend, right? Step one, we're in an uptrend. We just identified our multiply tested level of structure. Step two is done too. So what we would do in order to accomplish step number three, and I'm doing this because those of you who have stayed to this part of the video, you actually do care about your trading and you're ready to start improving. So I'm gonna give you exactly what I do. Now that I have this market, uh, I have all my preemptive technical analysis done. I'm down on my trading time frame. I can look for this market to pull back to around this zone it's not an exact level, right? We're looking at a little zone right here. Pull down into this zone, and then at this zone is where I'll look for possible trading opportunities. Maybe it's a price action pattern, like a double bottom. Maybe it's a candlestick pattern, a shooting star, whatever, uh, excuse me, a hammer candle, we're going long here. Whatever it may be, whatever entry reason you have in your trading plan, that's what's important to remember. But we're looking for entry reasons in this zone for the rest of this week and for next week if we don't pull back this week. But this is where I'm expecting the pullback to come to. If we don't get a pullback, this market continues to rally in a major way, then the next level we're looking at for possible resistance for a possible counter trend move is around 1.3 even, 1.303 in that little zone will be the next level of possible resistance for the dollar Swiss. So guys, I hope this video has been extremely helpful for you and you're trading. That's what I try to do each and every week with videos is give you a, uh, an edge over the market, give you something that can help you actually achieve profitability, something that can help you achieve your trading goals. And if you are ready to actually invest in your trading career and learn a little more about the exact strategies I use, the exact entry reasons I use, uh, the exact way I trade every single day, then we are running a discount on the EAP training program for the next few days. The link for that is in the description. We also have the Pro Trader Report in that. I give away a free course to, to members of the Pro Trader Report. And in that course, I'll be showing you exactly how I spot these levels these 3x tested levels of structure, a little more in-depth course on all of that. So if any of that's interesting to you, click the link in the description. If not, totally fine. Make sure you're subscribed here to the trading channel to be alerted when we come out with videos each and every week just like this. And I will see you in the next video. Talk soon.